Welcome back. In this module, we will learn about rules and their importance in the PCB design process. In short, rules rule the PCB, from defining track widths and signal clearances to component placement clearances. It is essential to have the correct design rules in place prior to starting the PCB layout. Let's view existing design rules for the expansion board PCB by opening the rules panel from the project's pull down menu. This will open the PCB Rules and Constraints Editor window. On the left, we see the Design Rules pane. With the Design Rules selected, we see a number of subcategories listed. On the right, we see a pane with all the individual rules listed in summary format, and most importantly, they have their checkboxes enabled. If not selected, these rules will not be enforced during layout and potentially cause serious issues with the fabricated board. There are two types of rules unary and binary. The unary rule focuses on the single object. The binary rule is between two objects, for example, track to track or wire to copper. By selecting and expanding the electrical rules, we see a further subgroup showing short circuit, unrooted net, connected pin and modified polygon rule types. Let's look at the clearance rule. By expanding the clearance rule, we see one predefined default clearance rule. This rule determines the minimal distance between the various primitives on the PCB. For example, as shown, between tracks and other objects in the matrix, there needs to be a minimum clearance of 10 mil. By default, the rule is set as simple. In addition, there is an advanced option, as you can see here. The advanced view provides further options. It is important to note that rules drive everything on the PCB. Having default rules is critical to preventing PCB issues. At this point, we have only a single rule for clearances. As you can see, there are a number of options under the pull-down menu. Again, it is important to keep the default rules intact. If a new rule is needed, simply right-mouse click on the existing rule and select New Rule or Duplicate Rule. This creates another rule entry and preserves the default rule. Click on the name and add a unique name identity. In this case, 5V Special. It is also important to note, design rule names cannot have spaces. In essence, rules govern objects that are selected by the queries. There are two object matching queries. As you can see here, both queries have all selected. This selects all objects. Clicking on the first object matching query, we can see there are a number of ways to limit or set the scope of the query. Nets and net classes are very commonly used to scope this type of rule. For example, we may want a particular net, let's say 5 volts, to have a higher clearance between it and all the other nets. Selecting net from the pull down menu then opens up another pull down menu where we can select any of the current nets in the design. Keeping the constraints mode to different nets only causes this rule to apply between 5 volts and all the other nets. Although we don't need this for our design, it is important for illustration purposes. In case we had high voltage nets, it would help to use net or net class options to set clearances. To edit a value in the table, select it and enter the new value. With two rules defined in this group, we need to look at their priority settings. Click on the Priorities button to open the Edit Priorities window. Here we see both rules and the current priorities assigned. It is critical to have the default rule with the All All scope as the lowest priority, in this case level 2. If the default rule's priority was set to 1, then the lower priority rule or rules would never be applied. In this case, we will decrease the priority of the default rule, thus increasing the priority of the 5V special rule we created earlier. Why is this the case? The higher priority rules act like a fishing net. Whatever the highest rule catches, the lower rules do not see. If the all all default rule was priority 1, then the special 5 volt rule would never see any nets and the special clearance rule would not be applied. To save the rule edits, we can click on either apply to continue in the editor or if done, click on OK. Let's look at editing the width rule values for track widths. Open up the routing rule group and pick width. The default values will be edited to allow for wider tracks on the PCB, for example, power traces. To edit, 
Click on the preferred width constraints entry and enter the new preferred width of 20mm. Next, enter 100mm for the max width entry, then hit apply. Next, we will look at the manufacturing rule under the manufacturing section for the board clearance. To add this rule, right click on the entry and pick new rule. This rule constrains the routing from getting closer than 10mm to the board edge. This distance may vary depending on your manufacturer's capabilities. Select Apply or OK to save the new changes. To recap, in this module we covered rules and their importance. It is important to keep the default rules intact. Use the New or Duplicate menu to add new rules as needed and ensure design rule priorities are set correctly. In the next module we will cover component placement on the PCB.